Uh, I'm Chris Hammock. I am a high school science teacher. I picked up the baton of teaching from my mother when uh, uh, the year she put it down was the year I picked it up. So we have a straight line of teaching going from my grandmother to my mother to me and now uh, my brother's daughter is teaching. Uh, as well. And I came from this long line of teachers, uh, grand, my grandmother and my grandfather on the Board of Education and my daughter now, who's uh, age 30 in Macon, is uh, teaching at uh, Miller Middle School, so the tradition continues. I'm Gail Hammock and I uh, have lived in Griffin all my life. Uh, I taught all total parts of 38 years and it, initially I had majored in business education. Uh, I taught typing, I taught shorthand, I taught bookkeeping. I had a minor in English and I loved it. And all of a sudden I realized it was a lot more fun to turn kids on to reading and, and learning, uh, you know, about great literature and, and being able to use their language well. I went back and I got my uh, got a major in English. And then eventually down the road, I got a master's in English. and. I spent the majority of my career teaching ninth grade English. Uh, English was my love. It, I felt it was a calling. It definitely was uh, more rewarding and it was more, I guess you'd say, my cup of tea. Scott Slade was one of my students. So he's on WSB and has done beautifully with them. And he came to me one day and said, Miss Hammock, could we please do something creative instead of those boring old book reports? And I said, sure, Scott, what do you want to do? He said, I want to make a movie. And so he made a movie about the sinking of the Titanic. But that started me to realizing that teaching needed to be more than lecture. It needed to be more than just writing everything down. And I think if my kids would say something they enjoyed the most, it was doing those puppet shows, doing those movies, doing those slide shows. And, and, and making literature come to life. Uh, she always taught the fantasy and the King Arthur and the Lord of the Rings. She had many times where a lot of folks would create these productions uh, for her projects. Uh, she introduced a lot of people to, uh, you know, really good literature. I felt like they needed to see literature come alive on the stage and for years, uh, we went to various things. Sometimes it was a city auditorium, sometimes it was Fox, whatever. And a lot of it was Shakespeare plays, you know. And you really had to work hard to turn these ninth graders on to Shakespeare. Well, I do remember the story of the uh, former student who um, the person was uh, considering taking their own life. And as Chris referred to, the one most stark thing was when the young man that was constantly in the principal's office, uh, Betsy Harris and I decided we were going to try to do something to get him to quit being in trouble. And what we did was we said, you know what, if you will get, stay out of the principal's office for one whole quarter, we'll take you out to your favorite restaurant one day and treat you to lunch. And somehow that simple thing made a big difference and he did stay out of the principal's office for a whole quarter and uh, as Chris said years later he came back and asked to see me and Miss Harris and he said I just want you to know I ha I've been through some really low times but there was a moment when it dawned on me that you two believed in me and I needed to believe in myself so that was just that doesn't happen very often but that was that was an amazing experience. As teachers, they had given that person enough sense of value to, uh, you know, they, they saved their life. And a great set of parents that uh, instill that love of, of reading and learning and, and then also service to the community. Those, those were the big things. And clothes closets, soup kitchen, furniture ministry, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, they were just really a great example of, uh, of walking the walk, not just talking the talk. And the mom and dad, if they weren't uh, if they weren't helping uh, people, uh, they weren't happy. So values are usually caught, not taught, and so hopefully my brother and I caught a, caught a little of it. And uh, you know, if the church doors were open, they were there. So uh, 
Uh, mom and dad have always uh, lived their Christianity. And, you know, gosh, I think mom was the first uh, uh, chairman, female chairman of the, of the deacons at, at First Baptist. My big passion for about 10 years was coordinating mission trips from our church. The main place was in Appalachia in eastern Kentucky. And for 10 years, we took about 50 adults every year. And not only did it help the people in Kentucky, but in my opinion, it opened our church up to the importance of missions. And all of a sudden, they, they wanted to work at the food pantry. They wanted to support the soup kitchen. They wanted to have a furniture ministry. And I've seen First Baptist just turn around because those adults got a, a love for missions. So those would be my two main uh, things that I'm most passionate about. A life of service, living the unselfish life uh, where you're giving yourself away. Yeah, I've, I've learned flexibility and that I keep that still to remind me that be flexible or you might get bent out of shape.